Uh, turn to 2 Timothy 3.12. And as you're turning there, I'm going to uh, tell you the title. Uh, it's The Importance of Biblical Convictions. And uh, <clears throat> just taking wisdom from God's Word and putting it into some good rules for your life. And uh, I think we all, we all need these. A lot of people here have them. And uh, I'll get into that in just a minute. And uh, the first point is to make... Uh, the, the first reason that we should have these biblical convictions is uh, to make good decisions in bad times. When you go through turmoil and, and, and trouble, in, first, in 2 Timothy uh, 3.12 it says, Yea, <clears throat> and all that will live godly in Jesus Christ, and Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And in Romans 5.3 it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Uh, bad things are going to happen to all of us. In, uh, in Ecclesiastes 9, 18, it says, <clears throat> Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. Uh, we all are going to run into problems in life. And I mean, after this, the problems that we've had in church, I mean, we all know that there's turmoil, and, uh, and, and we're gonna, people are going to get sick in our families, and uh, you know, we can lose loved ones. Uh, we can have, uh, you know, you can lose your jobs. Uh, all kinds of things are going to happen. But if you are reading through your Bible and making rules for yourself for when the times get bad, make, make these decisions before the bad times come, then you're going to be able to handle these problems in a lot better fashion. <clears throat> uh, uh, and the next, uh, the next point is when temptations come. You should make some rules for yourself for when, when you become tempted to, to live in the flesh and to do things that are wrong. In uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, There hath been no temptation taken you, but such as, common, as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will, su will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may, also, uh, be, able, that ye may be able to bear it. So before you're tempted to do wrong, you should make the decisions not to go to those places. If you read through Proverbs, it says not to go even near the door of the strange woman. It's a, it, it gives us all kinds of guidelines. Don't even look at the wine while it's red and it moveth the right or, or whatever. And uh, just to, to stay away from these things, make these rules in your life so that you don't even have to, uh, to go too far into temptation. Make the decisions not even to get close to it. Uh, another great reason to have biblical convictions is, uh, is to make wise the simple. We don't always understand every situation, and everybody uh, isn't always going to, to feel totally competent to make every decision. But in Psalms 19.7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. If you're reading through your Bible and you're making these rules for yourself, you might not even understand all of them and uh, why you shouldn't do this or that, but whenever you come into a problem that you don't understand, if you have these biblical convictions already set up in your life, then, uh, then, then you won't make these big mistakes, or you'll make great decisions that'll put you further ahead for the Lord and building, uh, building things and uh, treasures in heaven for yourself. Uh, even, a man, <clears throat> even a man that's weak can get on a forklift and li lift more weight than any other man could lift. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, we're all weak. And, and maybe there's some people with, uh, that, that are great at making decisions. But with, with God's word and his convictions, it's like we have a forklift. We could lift more than any way. We can make wiser decisions than, uh, than anybody just living in the flesh. Uh, another great reason to have these biblical convictions is, uh, and I can't get into all of them. There's too many of them for tonight. But, uh, but um, another great reason is... Uh, to help weaker Christians. I mean, we're, uh, one thing that we're focusing on, I think, in this church more is discipling people and, um, and getting disciples to serve the Lord with us. Uh, and one of, the, one of the main things that, uh, in 1 Corinthians six twenty it says, For ye are bought with a price, wherefore glory God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Now, if we can teach people that Christ died for us, and that he's done everything for us. Uh, then, and then we teach them that all of their convictions, everything they do in life needs to be glorifying God. We need to be living for him. And you can build all of your convictions off of this principle. 
then they'll be much more successful as Christians. When we get people saved at the door, and, uh, and if we can get them in church and start teaching them these biblical convictions, uh, maybe things that you have special in your family or that you've made up your mind on, then uh, they can live, they can take these rules and live their life by them, and they can be much more powerful Christians. Uh, one of the big things that, that I run into this with is training our children, and uh, they always ask why. And, uh, and you really, as a parent, you shouldn't just say, because I said, you should trace it all the way back to glorifying God. The reason you obey your parents is so that you can glorify God. The reason you, uh, you don't want to fall into sins and you don't want to be mean to your brothers and sisters is to glorify God. And uh, uh, if you read through history, some of the greatest people in history have been taught by their parents biblical convictions. And mothers... I mean, there's nothing more beautiful in the world than a woman that teaches her children biblical convictions and, uh, and makes children that can serve the Lord. And uh, you can really see the fruit of when women do that in their children. And uh, uh, my fourth point is uh, to make your biblical convictions before the tough times come. In James 1, 5, it says... If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it, it shall be given him. Now, don't wait until you run into a bunch of problems before you start searching the Bible for the answers. Search the Bible early. Uh, teach your children early before they run into problems. Uh, you know, avoid fornication. Read your Bible diligently. You know, stay away from alcohol. All these biblical convictions and, uh, you know, One of our big convictions is, uh, is, is, you know, praying for a mate for our children, that they're going to be courting and not making big mistakes in those areas. That's a, it's a really wide open area for, uh, for young people to make mistakes. But in closing, uh, I know a lot of people have been to our house. I don't think we, we may have taken our wedding pictures down, but uh, in our wedding pictures, uh, in all of our wedding pictures, I have a Bible that the, that the pastor presented to me at our wedding. And... I was only 20 years old, and I was a lot more agreeable than I am now when this happened. But I had that Bible after, at, during the wedding, and then after the wedding, I just kept it in my hand. And listen, there was a, a, an onslaught of little old ladies that tried to make me put that down. And there was like a whole phalanx of women that wanted me to put that Bible down and not have it in the pictures of our wedding. And, uh, and being a young man, one of, our convic one of my convictions was uh, to build our family on the Bible. And I didn't put that Bible down. And as you go through life, as, uh, as you guys start families, as you guys raise your families for the Lord, just don't put the Bible down. Amen. Keep it. Just keep it in your hand. All the pressure in the world, just don't let, don't let them take the Bible out of your hands. And serve the Lord. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you for this church. Pray that you would bless us, bless this church, and uh, just help us to uh, keep our biblical convictions, Lord, and not put the Bible down. Bless the next man that, uh, that may come up to preach. In Jesus' name, amen.